Hi everyone, and welcome to part 8 in the final video of a series of videos that I'm doing of an ATV trip across Newfoundland my friends and I did in September of 2018. On this last day of our trip, we started in Robinson's, we left Pirate's Haven, then we drove to Porta Basque and we took the ferry back to Nova Scotia. If you drive directly on the rail bed, it's only about 105 kilometers, which is about 65 miles. But we made several side trips and we added another 40 to 50 kilometers and we stopped at Cadroy Pond, South Branch Mountain, Little Cadroy Pond, different mountain peaks near Red Rocks and Cape Ray, and then last but not least we stopped at JT Cheeseman Provincial Park before finally arriving at the ferry terminal. If you want to do this trip, go to my website CrossingNewfoundlandByATV.com and you can learn how. Everything you need to know is there including easy to follow GPS tracks, lots of videos, pictures. There's also various different types of trips that you can take that you can explore and see which is right for you. Thanks for watching and do me a favor and click the subscribe button and then the notification bell to get notified of when I upload videos. This area here is called Robinson's Head and it's a beautiful bluff overlooking the ocean and I really wanted to get the new drones up here but unfortunately it was very um, it was very windy so we were unable to put them up. Thank you. The water looks high here compared to last year. So after we did the trail around Robinson's Head, which is shown here in orange, we went back through the Pirate Haven campground area to the rail bed, which is the trail here in blue. Then what we did is we kept heading west towards Port of Basque, and one of our first stops that we made for the day was in at uh, Codroy Pond, which I'm going to show you here now on satellite view. There used to be a very easy trail to get in that I have shown in red here, but now some of that is blocked off and you can't get in. But someone else made a new trail that goes back a little bit and uh, it's not showing here but it goes kind of like where I'm showing you there and it takes you in. It's really beautiful in there. Somebody littered the trail going in there with uh, broken beer bottles. We didn't notice on our way in but on our way out we noticed. So luckily none of us got a flat but we had to stop for a few minutes and uh, clear out a lot of that broken glass uh, so nobody would uh, get a punctured tire. Side of the this is where we're called the tire there. 
So just to recap, here's where uh, Cadroy Pond is on the map. We left there, we got back on the rail bed, which is shown in blue here. We headed west, and then our next major stop was the mountaintop in South Branch. Uh, it's not hard to get to. That trail in purple there that I'm showing you is very steep, so you're only going to go about 10 or 15 kilometers an hour to get to the top. And then uh, the view from up there is uh, spectacular. Steady 13 kilometers an hour. <laughs> That's cool. A lot of the video clips from my video series this year are shaky, and uh, I apologize for that. I didn't realize all week I was filming with the stabilization setting turned off on my GoPro. I don't know how that got turned off, but somehow it did. So uh, I try to compensate for that a little bit in the editing process, but some of Thank it, uh, sometimes it worked okay, sometimes it didn't. So if you're wondering why it's so shaky in some places, that's why. This video was uh, shot with Bruce's drone, and uh, he didn't send it up much higher than this just because it was so windy here at the peak of the mountain that it wasn't worth risking trying to send it up any higher than, uh, than that. We only spent enough time at the top of the mountain to take a few photos, then we went back down that trail, got back on the rail bed, and then we uh, went west again until we got to Little Codroy Pond. And uh, it's not very difficult getting in there. It's slow going in a few places, but it's totally worth it if you're doing this trip. I recommend that you go in and take a look at this if you're on the west coast. Yeah, a couple kilometers of downhill. So at this location, Bruce was able to send his drone up and uh, he sent it far down the lake and uh, one of the problems is that he didn't realize is the wind was heading in that direction so his drone was flying out at about 70 kilometers an hour and then when he turned it around to try to bring it back it was fighting so hard against the wind to come back it killed the battery uh, really fast and it ended up having to make an emergency landing on its own off to the side on the gravel and we ended up having to go look for it later. We did find it, it wasn't too too hard to find it because it has GPS on it, but still it was uh, a little worrisome for poor Bruce there for a bit.
the gas station in the corner here. You just go past those red trucks. So if some of us stop for gas at Doyle's there, and then uh, it's only about 10 miles from there towards the Red Rocks area, and there's a couple of different mountaintops you can go to. Half of us went to one, and then half of us went to the other. Uh, the one on the left is in an area uh, by Red Rocks, and it's called Sugarloaf, I believe. And here's a view of it you can see there. Now that mountain off in the distance that I'm pointing to is the one that's on the right over here. And so you can see you're looking in that direction. And now if you drive over to that one, you look, of course, in the reverse direction and you can see out over the ocean. If you happen to be doing this trip and it's a cloudy day, don't bother going up to the second mountain. It's up above the cloud level, so when you drive up there, you won't be able to see anything. We did it one time and it was just pure clouds. But the other one that's lower in Red Rocks, you can still get a really nice view from there. Robinson's to Port of Basque is a fantastic route to finish the trip off. Uh, you get the mountain views, you've got this ocean water here, the cliffs, and now we're going to go up into the mountains again here. And um, we're not too far from the boat, so I mean, like I said, this is a fantastic way to finish the trip. And if you're just going to do a west coast tour, this is the area where you'd be starting your trip and ending it. This is the trail that takes you up to the first mountain I pointed out in the map earlier, up to the Sugarloaf Lookoff. And I never get tired of this view, no matter how many times we've been up here. I always love coming up here and we always make a point to come stop up here, even if it's just for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. 